Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been quite a while since we did a video. I think it's been like four weeks since we actually filmed the video. We posted a couple of cooking videos in the meantime, but we wanted to get back in the swing of things. And uh, today we're, we're kind of not necessarily building upon something we've already talked about, but we did already talk about kind of how to help a loved one or a, a family or, or a family member or anybody through pregnancy loss. Um, but what we didn't talk about was how to help somebody through pregnancy after loss. Um, and they might seem like there's a bunch of overlap there. And there is a little bit, but again, there's some points that really are important to us anyway. So we <laughs> figured that they probably are gonna be important to other people as well. Um, so the first thing is to remember that a fresh pregnancy does not erase the past. So just because they're pregnant again, it does not mean that all the feelings that they had through the pregnancy loss uh, are gone. Um, so no matter what, a fresh pregnancy or a new baby is not gonna erase the past. Uh, you're still gonna have all those feelings. So just be aware that even though they're pregnant now, they're probably still gonna be grieving, um, at least we were. So just again, and we keep talking about you know, playing off of their cues, but it's really important through all these, these points here to make sure that you really are playing off their cues. Be aware that there's not gonna be any real pregnancy bliss. There'll probably be some happy moments here and there, but there's definitely, it's not gonna be the same as it would be if it was just a, a new pregnancy without any loss prior to it. Um, and they're really not gonna have any feelings of being in a safe zone. So just be careful, don't make comments that, you know, you've heard the heartbeat, everything's gonna be fine, or you're out of the first trimester, everything's gonna be fine. And I mean, we're living proof that that can happen. Um, Make sure that you know, you're know you not saying anything, especially like after an anatomy scan, that you've seen the all clear and everything again is gonna be fine. And this one might seem really extreme, but even as they approach labor or even in labor, be aware that they're still gonna be fearful. And I mean, that even comes with people who haven't experienced loss. So there's always those nervous points. It's just, it, it's elevated once you've gone through something like pregnancy loss. Yeah, and then kind of going more off of the, you know, that there's not going to be a pregnancy bliss. So, um, you know, let the couple be as happy as they feel ready. So what I mean by that is, you know, for me personally, you know, I wanted to, we prepped the nursery, I mean, right away. Um, if we, you've been watching us, you know, we did IVF with this pregnancy. And as soon as we had our embryos, we decorated the nursery. So obviously we weren't even pregnant at that point. But that was something, you know, that gave us hope. And it was something, you know, positive and something that we looked forward to to decorate and, you know, to kind of wish that we could, you know, fill that that nursery with a baby. Now I know personally I have friends, you know, who who I connected with, you know, through loss groups that have gone through a loss. And I know, you know, some, you know, felt completely the opposite. You know, they didn't feel ready to set up a nursery until, you know, the third trimester. So, you know, kind of let them you know, prep the nursery, or they may not want to prep a nursery, just kind of kind of go off of their cues. Um, another thing is, um, you know, let them tell people or not tell people. Um, so for us, if you know our story, we didn't we didn't tell anyone. You know, no one knew we went through IVF, no one knew we were pregnant, and then no one knew we had a baby until Paxton was three days old and we brought him home from the hospital. We just never felt like we could tell people. We felt like as soon as we would, I felt that way, that once we told people, you know, you know, we would jinx it, so to speak, and we just never really felt comfortable. And then there were other reasons, and we'll probably do a video of why exactly we didn't, you know, tell anyone about all this. But just, you know, let them tell people if they were ready, and if not, you know, don't push them. And then along those lines, you know, don't ever say to them, you know, if they do choose to tell people, don't say, oh, are you sure you want to tell them this early? Don't make comments like that. <laughs> if they're ready to tell people, let them tell people. If they're not, you know, don't push it. And then another thing is, um, you know, don't make them feel guilty for not being as, you know, thrilled or happy or excited that you would expect them to be. So I know for me, you know, we went in and uh, checked up on the baby weekly. So we saw our ultrasound techs every single week um and you know not that they meant any 
harm by this, but you know, they would say, you know, try to enjoy the pregnancy, you know, try to be happy. And, you know, that was hard to hear because here I was trying to be as positive and optimistic and happy, you know, to be pregnant. Um, and, you know, to each appointment, it was kind of like, yay, we made it here, we made it here. And I was excited. But at the same rate, you know, I didn't, it was kind of like a guard I had up. I didn't want to, you know, get too excited. I didn't want to get my hopes up too much to, you know, have them crashing back down. I know, you know, for every appointment, I almost kind of prepped myself. And I know, you know, Ari and I, after every appointment, we never made plans after the appointments. You know, we never said, oh, after this, we'll, you know, go to the mall or, you know, we'll go and have dinner. You know, it was, you know, we'll go to the appointment, we'll come home because we didn't want to make plans in case, you know, it was a bad appointment, so to speak. Um, so we just, you know, an outside person may think, hey, why aren't they, aren't they happy? You know, they're pregnant. But it wasn't that we weren't happy, it was that we had our guard up. And then the last point that I want to make is, you know, don't ask too many questions. So if the loved one does say, hey, you know, share with you that they're pregnant, you know, kind of go off of their cues. And I, so, I know we say this a lot because everyone's different, but, you know, you don't want to ask too many questions. So like I had mentioned, we didn't tell anyone. So, you know, this wasn't something, you know, that, you know, people weren't asking us questions, but an example I can give is, you know, with Ari. So obviously Ari went through the law, so, you know, I don't fault him for asking me questions during the pregnancy, but it's just something that, you know, was hard on me. So he, he would ask me because it was something that would reassure him. So he's, he would ask me almost every day, you know, oh, was the baby moving a lot? You know, did Paxton kick a lot? Was he moving as much as he normally does? You know, he asked those questions because he, obviously he wanted me to be like, oh yes, he was moving a ton because that would then reassure him because he obviously was extremely nervous throughout the entire pregnancy too. But for me, you know, that almost put a lot of pressure on me because then I would second guess. I'd be like, well, did he move as much as he always did? And then, you know, you go down this rabbit hole of, you know, second guessing and questioning questioning everything. So just be cautious with what you ask. You know, I would probably say, don't ask them, you know, oh, is the baby kicking a lot? Or can you feel the baby move? Because if they can't, or if the baby's not kicking a lot, you know, you might be making them go down a rabbit hole they shouldn't be going down you know you don't want to stress them and it's similar you know if they if you know they have an appointment you know don't ask too many questions you never know if an appointment you know may have brought up questions or something that they aren't ready to share or if it's something that you know they're still unsure about and they need to do further testing maybe they don't want to really share that with you and kind of relive that appointment so just kind of go off of you know what they want to tell you they'll tell you and just don't ask too much so obviously we never end up covering everything here and there's tons of stuff again that we either didn't experience or didn't think of. So please add that stuff in the comments below. Um, and Natalie kind of got into some of the pregnancy after loss stuff anyway, the things that she wants to talk about, kind of how she felt and in general. But uh, so we're gonna get back into the swing of these. We're gonna try and do again, um, shoot for Thursdays, Thursday uploads every week with some, some cooking and some other random stuff, um, intermittent as well. So please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below, and thanks for joining, and until next time.